Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with some more math today. Today we're going to be going over another implicit differentiation problem. Here's the problem we're going to be going over. Um, all we're doing really is just to find dy dx by implicit differentiation. And we are given that the square root of x plus y equals x to the fourth plus y to the fourth. So if you haven't been following along, check out some of my other implicit differentiation videos that I've done the last few days. Um, I got one coming out today and then another one coming tomorrow too. So, you know, check those all out. Uh, it's a good kind of resource to string back to back to back if you're struggling with implicit differentiation. So you can really kind of get the hang of it by doing it a bunch of times. But let's go ahead and jump into this problem. We're going to follow the same kind of process that we have been um, with all the other implicit differentiation problems. Uh, and the first part to do that is to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. We know that we're taking the derivative with respect to x because we have dx in the bottom of this fraction here. If it said find dx dy instead of dy dx, then we would take the derivative with respect to y. So whatever is in your bottom here is what you want to take the derivative with respect to. So essentially all we'll do is we'll take the derivative of this whole equation, both sides, with respect to x. So we're just taking d dx of both sides. Before we do this though, what you want to think about is really in general whenever you're taking this, the derivative of something with a square root, it's easier to write that in terms of a power and then you can apply the power rule instead of trying to figure out how to take the derivative of a root. So what I mean by that is this is actually the same as saying this, instead of saying the square root of x plus y, what we want to say is x plus y to the one-half power. Because raising something to the one-half power is the same as taking the square root. So as a result, if we're going to take the derivative of x plus y to the one-half power, we can apply chain rule to do that. So whenever you're doing chain rule, you want to think about you know, essentially chain rule just says you have an inside function and an outside function where basically your inside function is being plugged into your outside function and you want to take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside. So first you want to think about what's your inside function. When we have something in parentheses like this, it makes it a little easier to see what our inside function is going to be. Usually a good starting place is to just say whatever's stuck inside your parentheses is going to be our inside function. And then everything outside of the parentheses is your outside function. So let's go ahead and do that and see how that works out. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So that means we're going to take the derivative of our outside, which is just raising everything to the one half power. When you're taking the derivative of something to a power, you can use the power rule. So the power rule says that we'll bring our power down in front. So bring the power down in front, leave the inside alone. So x plus y is going to stay x plus y. And then lower our power by one. So one half minus one is going to be our new power. To do this, we just need to get a common denominator. One is the same as two over two. Right? Two halves is just one. So since we have a common denominator, now we can just do one minus two is our numerator, which would be negative one. So that'll just give us negative one over two. So basically, this power will become negative one over two, negative one half. Okay? And then chain rule says now we need to multiply this by the derivative of our inside. So the derivative of x plus y. To find the derivative of x plus y, we can just find the derivative of x and then add the derivative of y. The derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. And then we're going to add <clears throat> the derivative of y with respect to x. The derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. Because y is a function of x, which we don't know, we can't find a derivative for y. So using this notation that literally just means the derivative of y with respect to x is really the best we can do. So 1 plus dy dx is the derivative of x plus y, which was our inside. 
So this chain rule here, we took our derivative of our outside, put the power down in front, lower the power by one, left the inside the same, and then multiply that by, and make sure you put this in parentheses, we're multiplying it by the entire derivative of our inside function, which is one plus dy dx. Okay, so that was the derivative of the left side of our equation. Now we need the derivative of the right side. We're taking the derivative of x to the fourth plus y to the fourth, all with respect to x. So again, just like we did with the derivative of x plus y, we can just take the derivative of x to the fourth and then add the derivative of y to the fourth. Derivative of x to the fourth is pretty straightforward. Since x is our variable and we're taking with respect to dx, we can just use the power rule. So we'll bring our four down in front and then lower the power by one. Four minus one is three. So 4x cubed is the derivative of x to the fourth. And then we're going to add the derivative of y to the fourth. But we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So as a result, y is, has to be treated as a function of x. So therefore, to take this, we have to do chain rule again, where you want to imagine this y is our inside function because it's an entire function of x. y is not our variable, it's a function. Since it's a function, we have some function of x all being raised up to the fourth power. Kind of like over here, how we had some function all being raised up to the one half power. So it's the same idea. We'll apply power rule for the outside part. So we'll bring the four down in front, leave the inside alone. So leave our y as y, lower the power by one. And then we need to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of y with respect to x, again, is just dy dx. Okay, so that's basically the implicit differentiation step. We've taken the derivative with respect to x of both sides of our equation. So now what we want to do is figure out how to solve for dy dx, which is going to be a little complicated because of how things are looking over on this side of our equation. So what we should probably first do is kind of simplify what we have. So think about this. First, this piece here, this x plus y all raised up to the negative one half power. Remember the one half power is the same as taking the square root. And the fact that it's a negative one half tells us it's the same as doing one over the square root of x plus y. So Really what we have here is one half times one over the square root of x plus y times one plus dy dx. Okay. All this stuff over here, we'll leave it as it, as it is. And then since we have these three terms all being multiplied together here, we can kind of combine them together. You could think of, in order to kind of think of everything in terms of a fraction, think of one plus dy dx as being one plus dy dx over one. So our numerators will just multiply across and our denominators will multiply across. So our numerator will get one times one times all this, which is just gonna be all that. So we'll have one plus dy dx and then our denominator is going to be 2 times the square root times 1, which is just 2 times the square root of x plus y. And then over here, nothing will change. Okay, so now what we have at this point, it's a little messy, obviously. Um, but let's think ahead a little bit, because there's kind of a couple different things that we could do from here. But let's think ahead to kind of our goal here. What we're trying to do is find dy dx, which means get dy dx all by itself on one side of the equation. Since we have a few different dy dx's, usually the easiest way to be able to do that is to get all your terms with dy dx over on one side of the equation and then factor out that dy dx so that there's only one of them. In order to do that though, we, we, we need to kind of get everything on one line. And what I mean by that is having this big fraction over here kind of messes things up. So what we want to do 
since we don't have to worry about getting anything out of this square root, having the x and the y in that square root is okay. We don't need to worry about canceling the square root out. But what we want to do is multiply this denominator over to the other side of the equation so that we can get this dy dx outside of kind of being stuck in a fraction. And the reason why we want to do that is so if we expand everything out, we'll be able to just add or subtract terms from one side of the equation to the other. So it'll help make it easier to kind of move our dy dx's around. So essentially we want to get it out of this fraction. And the easiest way to do that is to just multiply over our denominator to the other side of the equation. So first I'll just go ahead and kind of move this equation up to the top of the board here. Now we have, like I said, we just need to multiply both sides of our equation by this denominator here so that we can cancel it out from this side of the equation. So both sides are just going to be multiplied by 2 times the square root of x plus y. Remember, if we do it to one side of our equation, we have to multiply the other side of our equation also by 2 times the square root of x plus y. And keep in mind, you need to put all this stuff in parentheses because we need to multiply the entire side of the equation by this, this thing. If you forget those parentheses, you may you know, not distribute and only multiply it by part of the equation. So make sure that you put your whole equation in parentheses. We could do it over here too. But all that's going to do is this is going to cancel with our denominator. So that'll be gone, that'll be gone. We'll just have 1 plus dy dx equals. Now, with this here, we have these two terms. So since we have these two terms inside the parentheses here, we need this to distribute and multiply to that term, and we need to multiply it to this term. So to do that, we'll have 4x cubed times 2 root x plus y. So let's think about kind of combining like terms here. 4 times 2 would give us 8. And then x cubed times the square root of x plus y isn't really going to be able to simplify at all, unfortunately. So we're just going to be left with this. And then plus 4 times 2 again is 8. y cubed dy dx times the square root of x plus y. So again, things you know are kind of complicated over here, but that's okay. So now what we want to think about is getting all of our dy dx terms on one side and all of our non-dy dx terms over to the other side. So we have a dy dx term here and we have a dy dx term here. Okay, This term here and this term here do not have a dy dx in it. So what we'll want to do is we'll move this non-dy dx term over to the other side. So we'll subtract one from both sides and it'll cancel here. And then we'll subtract over this whole term from both sides of the equation. So minus 8y cubed dy dx times the square root of x plus y from both sides. So from over here, it'll cancel because positive that and negative that will cancel out. So then over on our left side here, we'll have dy dx from before. And now we're going to have minus 8y cubed dy dx root x plus y. So minus 8y cubed dy dx times the square root of x plus y. And all that will be equal to, we'll have this term from before and now a minus 1 that we subtracted over from the other side. So over here we're going to have 8x cubed times the square root of x plus y minus 1. That term got moved over to the other side. So now here's what we have. Notice now we have all of our dy dx's over on the left side of our equation, and on the right side we don't have a dy dx anymore. So now that we have these two terms over here that both have a dy dx in them, we can factor that dy dx out of 
the entire left side of our equation. So again, I'm just going to move this up real quick. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and factor out our dy dx from the left side. So all that means is we're taking dy dx out from each of these terms, and what we want to think about is what will be left. So what do we have to multiply by, what do we have to multiply dy dx by to get back to our dy dx? It would just be 1, right? If we imagine distributing this back in, the dy dx times 1 would get us back to our dy dx. So then we'll also pull a dy dx out of this term as well. So if we pull our dy dx from all this, what will be left would be the 8y cubed times the square root of x plus y. Right? If you imagine distributing this dy dx into each of those terms, it would get you back up to where we were the step before. So now over here, nothing changed. That minus one is not within our square root. Um, <clears throat> so now we have dy dx times all this stuff right here. Well, if we want to get the dy dx by itself, essentially that means we need to cancel out all this other stuff. If we just have dy dx times all this stuff, to cancel it out, we could just divide everything by all this stuff. So we'll divide both sides by 1 minus 8y cubed times the square root of x plus y. And remember, if we do it to one side of the equation, we have to do it to the other side as well. So we'll divide 8y cubed times the square root of x plus y from both sides of our equation. And all that's going to do is cancel this here. So we're just going to have dy dx on the left side. And over here, we'll have 8x cubed times the square root of x plus y minus 1 all over 1 minus 8y cubed times the square root of x plus y. So, like I said, I have a bunch of other implicit differentiation problems on my channel. Um, go check those out. And uh, I've got, like I said earlier, another implicit differentiation problem video coming out tomorrow too. So uh, that'll wrap up our week of implicit differentiation. So hopefully it was helpful for you. Um, but if you have any questions that I didn't address in this video, go ahead and drop them in the comment section below. I uh, you know, would love to make sure to answer all the questions that there are about how to solve this problem. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, you found that helpful and uh, hope to see you back soon.